Hi, welcome to another Unity 3D tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use the car AI setup that comes in standard assets with Unity. If you've already downloaded Unity, you want to open up the project and inside the project, like I've got here, you may want to create a plane that will just be the ground for our project. And I've also added in some cubes that you can see here. These cubes are going to be markers on the circuit that we will create for the cars to follow. And you can have as many of these as you like. These cubes act as waypoints. And a waypoint is a spot on a path that an artificial intelligent character can move towards. And in between, it calculates how it should be moving. Now, the car AI that comes with Unity is quite complex, as you're about to see. So you can do an awful lot with it when you know how. First of all, you'll need to go to Assets and Import Package Vehicles at the bottom here. And you'll also have to bring in the Utility Package as well. So bring those in and import them into your project. And you'll find them in the asset folder of the project window in standard assets. And if we go down and look here, you'll see there's a utility one and there's also a vehicles one. To add the car, go into the vehicles car folder and look for the prefabs. And in there, there will be two cars. There's one called just car. And that's when you can drop in the scene and drive around yourself using WASD or the arrow keys. And there's this car waypoint one and that's the AI version of the car and it's just got a little bit of extra script on it that the car that you can drive yourself doesn't have. Grab hold of that prefab and drag and drop it into your scene. Now you'll see that it's uh, quite boring in appearance actually. If we zoom in here. This is the default Unity car. Uh, it's called the Sky Car and it comes in with this whitish grey colour. When you first drag it into your scene, you might think, oh, the materials are missing, uh, which I did, and they're not actually. This is the color that's on that car. If you want to change the color of the car, which you probably do, go over into the hierarchy and select the car, drop down the car waypoint based object. Inside, you'll see a whole bunch of children objects in there. This prefab here isn't just the car model itself okay it's got a whole lot of other things the model is under sky car that's just right at the bottom and if you drop that down and have a look for car body that will pick up the mesh that is sitting on the top of the car which doesn't include the wheels one important thing i'll just mention now if you want to bring your own car into this system as i'll show you in a moment it needs to have the body and the wheels as separate objects right so to modify the color of the car's body, if you select sky car body and come down to the shader that's on there, you'll see that in the albedo, there's no image set whatsoever. So you can put your own texture map in there, or if you just want to change the color of the car, you want to make it red or something, you can change it by just changing the color on it. Now I made a custom map a moment ago if I just go down into my textures I've got a sky car body that I made and I'll drag and drop that over onto the albedo which will set up my car now all I did to create this texture for my car is I took the sky body car occlusion texture which is the white one here. Now it's not being used to color that sky car at all. It's being used elsewhere in the shader, which is down here. But I just took that into Photoshop, opened it up and changed and played around with the colors until I ended up with this purple holistic branded car. And then I used that PNG file as the albedo setting in the shader. Now that we've got our car, we can set up our waypoint system. So I'll just zoom back out again so we can see those red cubes that I created before. Those red cubes, by the way, they're just default Unity cubes and I've made them red so that you can see them in the video. If you have a look at each of these cubes, you'll notice that I've turned off the box collider and that's so that the car doesn't collide into its waypoint. With your waypoints created, and you can add more of these later on, 
we we're going to add the waypoint system. Now you're going to find that in the utility folder that we downloaded before. If you go into the top level folder, we're looking for a waypoint circuit. There it is. So you're looking for this C sharp script here. Now we've got to attach that to something. So let's create an empty object in the hierarchy. So right click in the hierarchy, uh, empty game object. Make sure that it's not childed to anything. And then let's call that our waypoint system. And then to that, you want to drag and drop that waypoint circuit script. Then select the waypoint system to make sure that it has been attached. Now to include these cubes as the waypoints for our system, just select them. Shift select and drag and drop them onto the waypoint system so that they become children. And as I said before, you can add as many cubes uh, or you don't even need to use cubes. You could just use empty game objects or you could use spheres or anything. I use cubes because I can see where they are. And then when it comes time to play the game itself, then you can select them and turn off their mesh renderer so that they're invisible. But when they're invisible, they're quite difficult to work with. So I like to be able to see them. Now with them added as children, select the waypoint system parent object and click on this button that says assign using all children objects that's in the inspector. That will automatically pick up anything that's attached to this game object and make it into a waypoint for you. Now my cubes were all named one, two, three, and four, and that's the order I created them as well. Also the order that you find them in under here. And therefore the script just picked them up in the correct order. If you end up with your waypoints in the wrong order, so say it goes from here to here to here to here and you actually wanted a circuit like that, then you can move your waypoints around with these buttons as well as deleting them as well. If you want to keep everything nice and consistent as far as naming is concerned, there's also an auto rename button that you can click and it will rename your waypoints so you can see the order of them right there. The waypoint system also gives you this really nice spline which is a curve that goes through all of the waypoints nice and smoothly, especially in the corners. And these lines are really useful if you're trying to align your waypoint system to a track. So if you had a drawn track on here or you had a model that was your racing track, then you could move around your waypoints and then also see between them where you might need to add more or move them so that the car's going to generally stay on the track. As you'll see in a moment, the car doesn't stick to this yellow line and you need to tweak its settings a fair bit to get that to happen. Okay, so now it's time to tell the car about our new circuit. So select the car waypoint based parent object that's right at the top. I'll just shut a few of these things down so we can see it. And what you're going to do is in the utility folder that we were just in, find the other script called waypoint progress tracker and drag and drop that onto the car waypoint base, so the parent object. Click on that parent object to have a look at the script that you've just attached. So this waypoint progress tracker. Inside of your script, there's two things that you need to set up. First of all, there's the circuit and that needs to point to your waypoint system. So grab hold of that and drag and drop it into the circuit. Next, there's the target at the bottom here, and that's going to be the target that the car is following. The car itself already has this attached to it, and if we go into the hierarchy and have a look in helpers, you'll see there's a waypoint target object sitting in there. Grab that and drag that down into the target box. Let's press play to see how it will act. So the first waypoint is this one that's over here. So the car will try and get onto the track as the first priority. Once it gets close enough to that waypoint, it then starts along the track to the next waypoint. Once it's considered itself close enough to that waypoint, it then goes and finds the next waypoint. Now what it considers close enough is in its own AI script. And if we have a look at that, click on the car waypoint, while this is still running, drop down the car AI control and you can see here the different values that it's using. 
if you have a look for reach target threshold right at the bottom that's the distance that it will have to be from the waypoint to consider having reached it so if you want it to be dead spot on that waypoint before it decides it's going to go to the next waypoint you'd need to set this to zero the only problem with doing that is that sometimes if a car's moving so fast or turning in too large of a circle you'll get your car going round and round and round a single waypoint and never ever reaching it so you always need to have some kind of a threshold distance set for that now there's a whole bunch of other values that you can find for setting the AI control. If you open up the script itself, the car AI control, it will tell you in there, right at the top with all of these private float values, what they do. So you can see here that we've got um, percentage of max speed to use when being maximally cautious. And that's the speed factor at the top. That's this first value here. If you modify that, you'll be able to slow the car down when it's being cautious. Now, the times it's being cautious is when it's reaching a corner and it has to turn and also that it has to brake beforehand. So there's this moment of cautiousness in the AI where it will brake, if you tell it to brake, and accelerate out of the corner um, to keep itself on the track. If we go back and run this script and while it's running play around with these values you'll see how they affect the AI. This car actually does pretty much all right on the default settings until it reaches this far corner where it starts to wobble and get a little bit out of control. Now you can turn this cautious speed factor down which is going to slow the car down a lot because it's being a lot more cautious but it stays very neatly on the track, as you can see here. And the best way to understand how these settings are affecting the car is to play with them yourself. So there's also an acceleration sensitive that you can turn up or down. There's a brake sensitivity, which you can also turn up and down. And there's other things as well as lateral wandering distance and speed, which gives the AI a bit of randomness to it. Um, you've also got things like a target distance, which you can set, you can have like never break if you don't want your car to break, or you can set the target direction difference as well. So that if um, the target of the waypoints are practically in a straight line, there's no need to break. So that might be what you put on there. But these settings will be different for every different type of track that you set up. Um, so you can have like a really radically out of control car if you want to turn up its um, cautiousness on its speed. And it'll do things like overshooting the targets and winding its way along the path. The steering sensitivity, you can turn that up as well, which is going to get us even more wobble along this track and you can also change the max distance from the waypoint so at the moment you're being cautious within a hundred units of the waypoint if you want that to be like 10 that you're only going to be cautious when you're 10 units away from the waypoint then the car can be much more reckless between the waypoints it also means that you can overshoot the waypoints a lot, um, but you can see the different behaviors that you're going to get here. And as I said, it'll be different for each track that you have, and it's just a matter of playing around with those settings. All right, so that's the end of this tutorial and how you set up your waypoint AI for um, car racing. In the second part of this tutorial, I'll show you how to add multiple cars, how to add different car models, and how to set up for a very simple race.